Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 13, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now the Apostle John says the same thing in, in his epistle, especially in chapters 3 and 4. 1 John 3, verse 11 reads, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. And he says the same thing in verse 17. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, <clears throat> how does God's love abide in him? Well, the answer is it doesn't. God's love doesn't abide in the one that really doesn't love the neighbor. So the rich man in our Holy Gospel for today had the world's riches. He had plenty of clothing and food. But he did not give the poor man any food or any clothing. The poor man was in need, but the rich man closed his heart against him. Therefore, God's love did not abide in the rich man, and he did not abide in God. If we see a family member, a friend, or a neighbor who is in need, and yet we close our heart against them, how does God's love abide in us? The Apostle John also says in 1 John 4, verse 8, Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. So since the rich man did not love and care for the poor man, then he does not know God. The rich man knew God in the sense that he called Abraham father, and he was aware of Moses and the prophets, namely the word of God, but he had no saving faith in the one true God. He did not know God by faith. And therefore, he failed to love his neighbor. So if we do not love one another, then this shows that we do not know God, for God is love. The Apostle John says, actually in our epistle for today, verse 20, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not love, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And so the rich man, perhaps claiming to know God, is really a liar. He didn't help the poor man. Therefore, he does not love God, for God is love. And since the rich man does not love his brother whom he has seen, the, whom he, since the rich man did not love the poor man at his gate whom he can see, therefore he cannot love God whom he does not see. The scripture is very clear that God wants us to love one another, but how? How are we to love one another? What does that look like? Commandments 4 to 10 talk about loving our neighbor. Commandments 1 to 3 talk about loving God. And commandments 4 to 10 talk about loving our neighbor. So take the fourth example, fourth commandment as an example. It says, honor your father and your mother. So when we despise or anger our parents and other authorities, then we do not love them or care about them. Rather, we should honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. We should regard them as gifts from God. And parents should regard their children as gifts from God and bring them up in, 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 in God's word. The fifth commandment says, you shall not murder. So when we hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, or when abortion is committed, or when we hate our neighbor, then we do not love them. It was not a loving thing for Cain to do what he did to his brother Abel. Rather, we are to help and support our neighbor in every physical need. That's the loving thing to do. 
Well, the sixth commandment says, you shall not commit adultery. So when we commit fornication, adultery, homosexuality, or other immoral sins, even of thought or deed, then we are not loving our neighbor. Rather, we are hurting him or her. This past week, the Presbyterian Church USA approved same-sex marriage. They said, this is the loving thing to do. What well, is it really? They do not know what true love means. Rather, God wants in marriage one man and one woman. A husband and wife are to love and honor each other. And this is God's design for marriage and family in our world. And children should know who their father and mother are. This is the loving thing. Or take the seventh commandment, you shall not steal. So when we, we, when we take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, that's not a loving thing. But rather, when we help our neighbor to improve and protect his possessions and income, that's a loving thing. Or take the Eighth Commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. So when we tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, then we do not love our neighbor. Rather, we are to defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. That's the loving thing. The Ninth and Tenth Commandments speak against coveting our neighbor's possessions or our neighbor himself. Rather, we are to be content with all that God has given to us, whether much or little. So it's very simple. God defines what is right and wrong and what is good and bad. So when we do what is right and what is good, then this reflects God. It reflects God's love and care for one another and society. And when we do what is wrong and bad and evil, then this reflects the devil and our sinful flesh. So God disciplines us because he loves us. And we discipline our children because we love them and care about them. To continue in sin is not a loving thing to do in our own lives. But the world wants to define what is right and wrong and what is good and bad. It does not like God's standards. The world wants to define love according to feelings, even if these feelings go against God's word. And the world thinks that love is letting a person do whatever they want. The world would, would even argue that a loving God would never punish sinners for their sins. And the world would even argue that a loving God would not damn anyone to hell. The world does not know what love is because it does not know God. God's definition of love and the world's definition of love are two different things. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather he wants the wicked to turn from their way and live. So the rich man's brothers are to repent. How? By bringing them God's word. That's the loving thing to do. We speak the truth in love to a family or a brother who is in sin. The loving thing for the rich man's brothers is not to raise someone from the dead. It is to bring them God's word, which speaks both law and gospel. So the loving thing in our own life, it, lives is repentance. To live according to God's will and to have faith in the forgiveness of sins. Yes, there is damnation for those who have rejected God's word and his grace and mercy in Christ. God loves them. He cares about them, and he calls them to repentance. But if they reject God's word, there's nothing else God can do. There is eternal damnation that the rich man suffered. What is love? The Apostle John says, God is love. So love does not define God. Rather, God defines love. And God gives the word love its true meaning. 
So without any knowledge of God, one does not know what love is. The Apostle John also says, By this we know love, because Jesus laid down his life for us. And again he says, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We do not earn God's favor by what we do. Rather, God's love and mercy has been given to us in his son. His son is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Father sent his only begotten son to bring salvation to us sinners by means of the cross. And that's the loving thing for God to do, to rescue us from damnation. And that's what he did by sending his son. That's what love is. God did not wait for us to love him first. Instead, he took the initiative and he loved us first. He's the shepherd that searched out the lost lamb. He's the one who came down from heaven in order to bring us life and salvation. So true love was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he was kind toward one another, giving sight to the blind and hearing to the deaf and speaking the truth in love. When Jesus was mocked and insulted and spit upon, he never lost his temper. He never retaliated. Instead, he was patient and long-suffering. There on the cross, he, he even said, Father, forgive them. God's love is sacrificial. He gave himself for you and me. He made the payment for our sins. He suffered the wrath of God in our place. He was the innocent Lamb of God who died for you and me and for all. What do you see there on the cross? Do you see a man who is dying an unfortunate death? Or do you see one who died for the sins of the whole world? We were like that poor man spiritually, being stripped of our righteousness in the Garden of Eden and being wounded with sin. And yet Jesus is our good Samaritan who has come for our rescue to save us and to help us. So there on the cross, Jesus was the ob object of scorn so that you may be the object of God's love. Jesus was cursed so that you could be blessed. He was stripped of his clothing so that you could be covered with the robe of his righteousness given in holy baptism. He was spit upon so that you could be smiled upon by God the Father. He was wounded so that you could receive the, the healing balm of forgiveness. He was marred beyond human appearance so that you might appear glorious and righteous before God's throne. He died so that you may live. And because Jesus rose from the dead, you shall live too. Because Jesus died and rose again, mercy is given to us poor sinners. Our sins are forgiven on account of Christ. And here, even here at this altar, we can touch and taste the forgiveness of sins. So again, love does not define God, but rather God defines love. God gives the word love meaning. What is love? Love sacrifices itself for the benefit of others. 1 John 4, verse 19, our text for today says, We love because he first loved us. So God's love and mercy in Christ has first come to us, and we received it. And then it flows from us outward toward others. So good works, love and mercy toward the neighbor uh, are all a fruit of faith. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. So these things flow out of a repentant heart. God's love toward us inspires us to give freely of ourselves toward others. So God's love toward us motivates us to love one another. If we fail to love one another, then we really have to ask the question whether we believe in God's love toward us. So love isn't just a feeling, as the world might say. Love is not allowing others, allowing us or others to sin as much as we want. Love is not selfish, rather, God is love. God loves you. 
and he cares about you. He gives you your food and clothing. He blesses you in both body and soul. He is the giver of all good gifts. He disciplines us and he forgives us. He protects us from e eternal damnation. God is love. We love others because God first loved us. Thanks be to God. Amen.